pointers to lack of export readiness. So I have a preamble. I'll talk about the pointer, offer a proposal, and then talk about participation, how we can participate, particularly for those of us in the diaspora. For a nation to be able to uh, receive inflow, uh, receive foreign exchange, particularly for developing nations, you rely a lot on foreign direct investment, foreign portfolio investment, remittances, another investment, then trading goods and trading services. But what's interesting about this is that Trading goods and trading services is the only option that a nation have control over. Foreign direct investment, foreign portfolio investment and remittances, we will need to rely on someone somewhere in the world to decide that they want to invest in the country. They need to decide that they see the country has been, has been uh, worthy of their resources and investment. Meaning, if they do not see that, then the country is going to suffer from dependence on such sorts of forex to be able to enhance the cash flow of need and usage of forex for different economic activities in the country. And that's exactly the case that Nigeria is in right now. Uh, dollar is becoming more and more uh, stronger against Naira. And that is not helping the economy at all. I mean, the, the challenge is palpable within the country. How much a lot of people have to endure right now. Now, Look at this chart. You see the trajectory of um, export volume and growth in Nigeria. Now, this is so small compared to what we are capable of doing. Because South Africa, with a population of just about one third of Nigeria, is doing about 90 billion in export. And this is oil and non oil. In fact, let me show you the contribution of non-oil, because our focus in this conversation will be non-oil, since oil is mainly in the hand of the government. Non-oil hovering between 10, as of this year, 10%. Last year, 15, 11%, 7%, 9%, 10% from Q1 to Q4. From Q1 to Q4. Now, there's a challenge. Remember the different options I mentioned for trading goods, trading services, uh, foreign direct investment, foreign portfolio investment. Those other sources is drying up. They are all drying up. Look at it. Look at the foreign direct investment received in Nigeria in, since 2020 till date. You will notice since COVID, We've not had reasonable FDI, FPI, and even other investment in the economy. This is a big challenge. This is actually the reason why, like I said, we need to grow our export, but we also need to look at what are the issues that we need to consider. In fact, why is it that even those have attempted to do this, fail, what could be the problem? Because the idea is to prevent us from going the same direction. Someone say, I can't hear a word. Can you hear me? I can hear myself. I'm using a device to monitor and I can hear myself. Abiola say, you cannot hear me. Maybe you should check your device. All right. But can you hear me, please? Let me confirm what that can hear me. Kindly confirm that you can hear me. You can drop a message in the chat. Hello?
All right. Thank you very much. So you can see how it has gone down significantly. This is why we need to grow exports. But like the focus of this um, session is, is to look at the pointers. What are the issues? Because if we just rush in and also not know what the issues are, then it may become difficult to sustain it, which is why some people have come in in the past, have not been able to sustain it. Now, let me first of all define export readiness. Because even when government trying to solve the problem or the challenge of getting people to do export sustainably, because you train people, you bring them in, they are able to do one or two transactions, but they are not able to continue or sustain it. Why? What's the real issue? What are issues? What is it that is the problem? Export readiness can be defined as a multifaceted concept that involves the ability of a company to successfully enter the market, not just enter the market, sustainably compete in that market, but more importantly, significantly grow its market share till it becomes established in the market. Significantly grow to increase its market share until it becomes established in that market. So what I will try to do is to show you the pointers or what I will call the signs and symptoms of lack of export readiness and then also talk about the solution, what we need to do to be able to ensure that we become ready to be able to weather the storm, manage the issues and nuances and challenges and make it a success. And make it a success. Lack of export readiness refers to a situation where a business or company is not adequately prepared, is not adequately prepared to engage international trade and export its products and services to the foreign market. It's not adequately prepared to engage in the business. Here are some of these things to look at. Number one, limited market research. It's a sign. The company has not conducted comprehensive market research to identify the potential market. For example, I want to bring stock into US. What are the opportunity within the US market? How do we take advantage of those opportunities in the US market? So market research, understanding the customer preference, being able to identify the competition, understand regulatory requirements in that market. Then inadequate product adaptation. Of course, if you are taking your product to any market, every market have peculiarity. Every market have peculiarity. And it's important you understand the necessary adjustment or changes in your product. Let me give you an example. You know, there was this story about a, a manufacturer of golf ball in the uh, US who wanted to export the golf ball to South Korea, either Japan or South Korea. And, but the golf ball are packed in falls, group of falls. But people were not buying because the word fall sound like death. You know, even in our own uh, language, you notice some words, the same spelling, similar pronunciation, but different meaning. You can get example of some of those kind of words. So many people, people were not buying because they pack it in four in US, and they want to pack it in four in South Korea, and people did not buy. Because people, in fact, people avoid that word for some building don't have fourth floor. Why? Because of the what they associate for with. 
So they are in need for until they discover that and adjusted the product such that they now have five or more in the pack. Product adjustment. Sometimes it might be labeling that, need to be that you need to understand to be able to get the good into the market. Intellectual product protection is another very important one, particularly for technology-related products, to be able to ensure you protect yourself in that market. Lack of export compliance because inadequate understanding of the regulations, export controls, and other issues in the export market. Insufficient financial resources. In fact, funding is a big deal. Funding is a big deal because, of course, if you are going to do the business, you need to be able to fund. Funding is a big deal. Cost of market entry, in particular, marketing campaign, product certification, and the like. Then market entry strategy. Are there product labor requirement for AFCFTA? Yes. What's interesting about this is that for AFCFTA, the um, the labeling standard that Europe and America already adopt works because for many countries in Africa, they don't even require as comprehensive as some of the European and American uh, we often require. So conforming to the European standard is just fine for, apart from peculiar product, like it is for food, but for drugs and some other product, it might, depending on the country, but what is being done right now is to harmonize, is to harmonize within the continent. Documentation, limited export documentation is another challenge. Inadequate export logistics, another challenge, which includes issues around logistics, shipping, warehousing, distribution of the product in the export market, distribution of the product in the export market. Then the team you're working with, and of course, risk management. Now, let me summarize this and explain them in detail. Readiness to go global to different countries, particularly in Africa under AFCFTA, helps a business to become resilient enough to overcome the challenges on the road to internationalization or globalization. Sadly, many businesses lack the readiness, such readiness, even if they are unaware of this. There are some big businesses a business owner who think that because of their size, they are ready to go global. But this is not true in many cases as many or so business soon later, sooner than they start the journey, they become disappointed because they begin to see issues that they probably not even envy say that they begin to face along the line. The goal of this session is to help to avoid trial and error approach to global business and show how they can get it right first time. So businesses, however, business owner rather, that are in doubt regarding their firm readiness to go global, for them, here are some of the signs, and I'll be summarizing it. I call these seven Ds. Number one, delay issues. Delay issues. Number two, demorate issues. Number three, discrepancy issues. Number four, death. Number five, dropout. Number six, death of knowledge. Number seven, defective good. Someone asked a question, what must I do to get buyers for my product in US, Canada, and other countries? I will talk about that later in the course of this conversation. This is, if I get 10 questions in a day, seven will be around finding buyers. And many people have thought that this is the greatest challenge they have, but the challenge is beyond getting buyers.
Because after getting buyer, how do you ensure eventually you do? You remember the definition of export readiness, a multifaceted concept that involves successfully entering the market, that's getting the buyer, sustainably competing in the market, and being able to significantly grow to take some market share, reasonable market share in that place. He said, I've struggled and made different efforts for three years to start exporting my product abroad, but all to no avail. I partnered with local women in Niger State to process raw shea butter, African black soap, neem oil, moringa leaf and powder cola nut, and bitter cola palm oil. I've registered my company and get export that for Nigeria for Council, but I've not been successful. You know, all that you talk about that you have done, you've not done much around readiness for export. Registering the business, getting an export license, working with people to get the product are all things you need to do, which are good, but they are not going to get you ready. Having a product that I want to export does not make me ready for export. Having a product that I want to export does not make me ready. Having a product just give me an idea of what I want to export, what I want to ship. Being ready is a different thing entirely. If I don't solve the problem of being ready, it's either I have delay or I incur demerit or I have issue of discrepancies and all this leading to losses, which could eventually make me drop out of the business because of depth of knowledge and in some cases, defectiveness of goods. So it's good you are in this conversation. I'm sure you will find answers to some of the questions I mean, you have in this session today. So delays, demorate, discrepancies, defective goods, death of knowledge, death losses, and dropout are all signs of lack of export readiness, are all signs of lack of export readiness. So let me take them one by one. Number one is delay. Delay in getting buyer is a sign of lack of export readiness. Delay in sourcing product, delay in delivery, delay in shipment, delay in documentation, delay in payment, any form of delay that happened not occasionally when there are maybe issues like COVID, but that happen regularly. It's a sign something is wrong with the readiness of that business. A business that perpetually has delay at every critical point in the export process is not ready to go global. Delay is a sign of knowledge gap in effectively managing the export process. Delay is a common phenomenon in international transaction because of enormous documentation, logistics, and supply chain management, and supply chain management. However, each delay that occur could be a lesson that should make the next transaction a lot better. That should make the next transaction to be a lot better. Why? Because you should have learned something. But this is not the case. The export company lacks the capacity to manage the business. This is a sign that the business is not ready to go global. This delay can occur at different points. At the point of getting buyer, there could be delay. At the point of procurement, there could be delay. In sourcing for financing, there could be delay. In production, there could be delay. In processing documents, in, in movement of goods, in loading, clearing, shipment, even in payment, if this happens frequently, not occasional issues that could be, like I said, maybe because of COVID or some very unprecedented issue, which are not common, but I'm talking about a situation where consecutively you're having the same problem. The next one is demorage. In fact, delay impact on demorage. What is demorage? Demorage is the fee pay 
for the usage of container beyond the free period while the container is in the custody of the shipping line. Demore is the fee paid for the usage of container beyond the free period while the container is in the custody of the shipping line. Typically, shipping line will give you some days free. You came to pick up container, take it to your warehouse, and you didn't bring it back on time, or the container arrived, the vessel came, but your goods could not be loaded, loaded on the vessel because it was not ready for export. Because it was not ready for export. There were documentation issues that needed to be sorted out before they were allowed the product to go. So they did not allow the product to go. You miss that vessel. You now have to go on another vessel. Those are signs of lack of export readiness. Those are signs of lack of export readiness. A business that always paid demerit to shipping line is not ready to go global. Demoreg is a sign of non gap in efficiently managing the export process. This is because demoreg is an extra cost that an export business has to pay to the shipping line for being unable to timely provide the required documentation needed to clear the good for export. It was also because in a situation where part of the goods that are supposed to be shipped together on the same vessel have arrived at destination. Have arrived at the terminal, at destination, and stopped in the container why there is delay in delivering orders. Different things could constitute this delay that caused demerits. Most of the time when there is demerits, there is a delay maybe in shipment, in delivery of goods to complete the shipment, and they do not allow partial shipment, and of course, documentation. And of course, documentation. Discrepancy. Discrepancy. Discrepancy is that to occur when the detail on the shipping document presented to the importer, either directly or indirectly through the importer's bank, contradicts the detail of the agreement reached on the sales contract. Contradict the detail of the agreement reached on the sales contract. Or, in the case of letter of credit transaction, contradict the terms of a letter of credit. Contradict the terms of a letter of credit. Discrepancies. It also caused delay. And this discrepancy causing delay can eventually <laughs> cause losses. And of course, I mean, resulting from demory. Cause losses that is resulting from demory. A discrepancy can lead to delay in payment and in some cases, rejection of shipping documents. And it goes all together. A company with consistent discrepancy in its shipping document has a skill gap in processing those documents. And this is evidence of lack of export readiness. Someone said you talk about documentation. What are the documentation requirements to trade under AFCFTA? For Nigeria, we are still waiting. Generally, the regular shipping document will be needed in addition to a certificate or, of origin. Remember, within the AFCFTA, it's a free trade area. So not just any business or company or country can trade within the area. It has to be among the 47, 48 African country that have ratified and have become state party. However, to be able to take advantage of AFCFTA, they will need to get certificate of origin that evidence that the goods they are shipping originate from the country 
who is a party, a state party in uh, who is a state party in the agreement? Who is a state party in the agreement? Now, for the documentation, it will still be the same. Like if you are responding from Nigeria, you need to do pre export documentation, which are pretty much regulatory documents that you use to confirm to the government that you want to export legally. And there will be documentation required by the buyer to clear the goods, chief among them being bill of lading, invoice packing list, and a number of other documents. But the only new document I expect to see is certificate of origin. But the process of obtaining that is still with the presidency. The last administration could not review it and sign before leaving. So we're hoping that um, a new administration that should be sorted out very soon. Defective goods. This is a sign of lack of export readiness, which involved the shipment of substandard goods to the export market. The defectiveness of goods could happen to manufacture products. But more mostly seen in commodities, hard and soft commodities. That's agric and solid minerals. For solid minerals, defectiveness can be due to presence of too many sand and stone packed at the time of at the mine with the mineral being exported. And for the action of produce, defectiveness can be due to lack of adherence to good agricultural practice, high level of pesticide residue, poor post adverse handling, high level of moisture leading to deterioration during storage or transit and either wrong or inadequate packaging. Either wrong or inadequate packaging. All these contribute to defective goods. So that means I need to know the quality specification and, of course, post harvest only of my product, particularly if I'm doing commodity. Particularly if I'm doing commodity. Death of knowledge. Death involves shortage of knowledge of export business management, which include handling, documentation, processing, logistic management, supply chain management, relationship management, international marketing, Incotent, costing, handling trade finance instrument, mitigating payment issues, understanding cultural intelligence, to mention a few. A business that lacks export business management skill is not yet ready to go global. As a matter of fact, lack of export readiness in a business is actually evidence of depth of knowledge of export in that business. That means some knowledge are lacking in that business. That's the only reason why. That's the only reason why you even have an issue in an area in the first place. Because if there's a serious understanding of how the business and the process works, then you can avoid that issue. And sincerely, that's exactly the reason why capacity building then become important. But unfortunately, for one reason or the other, people don't want to learn and they want to go into a particular bit. And this is not just export, although export is a bit knowledge intensive. 
But generally, anything you are going to go into and put your money into, you should have a good understanding of it. The higher the level of ignorance in health problem management skill, the higher the tendency for discrepancy, for delays, for defectiveness in the goods, for demoric, for debt, and subsequently dropping out of the business. Then debt, that's losses. That's losses, debt. Debt occur when the business incur losses at the end of the transaction. And quite frankly, this is inevitable for a business who has not mastered how to significantly manage its risk. For example, delay in shipment who mean the buyer can charge a penalty. Delay in shipment who mean you pay demerit and extra cost. Not factored in. Defective goods means the product is damaged. That can even be a total loss. That can even be a total loss. A business that constantly incurs losses in export trade is not ready to go global. Debt often occurs as a result of the extra and unnecessary cost incurred in export transactions as a result of discrepancies in the documentation presented, delays at different critical points in the export process, demoring that result from delays and discrepancy and defectiveness in the quality of the goods that were shipped. Debt is one of the major issues that lead to dropout from the business. Because if the capital have now been eroded, what do you expect? Because the capital has been eroded, eroded, there's nothing else to do. So, drop out. The term used in describing a business that started exporting, but could not continue. Remember again, let's go back to the definition. Let's go back to the definition. Export readiness is a multifaceted concept that involves the ability of a business to, number one, successfully enter the export market. Number two, sustainably compete. So people enter, they are able to do one or two shipments. You know, I've been monitoring export from Nigeria since 2006. It's almost two decades. And I've seen a lot of businesses come in and go out. But I've also seen a lot of businesses come in and sustain it. Why? They could sustain it because they could sustain it because they were ready. In spite of challenges, even including the last COVID, he didn't get them out of the business. They didn't have to drop out. Dropout phenomenon clearly explains the high mortality rate of businesses that venture into exploitation. There are so many businesses that have dropped out of exploitation in different parts of the world. And some of the reasons include the losses they incur on their first shipment due to inadequate costing, the challenge encountered in logistics of delivering the product to the destination, the tariff and non-tariff barriers, the payment default by buyers abroad, rejection of goods shipped because of low quality, very long cash conversion cycle, unfavorable foreign exchange control regulation, unutilization of export proceeds. All these contribute to being to dropping out of the business. How many African government have AFCFTA ready? Ready, I would define it at different levels. About 54 have signed. 40, 
I think 48 or 49 have ratified. They are ready to start. But about 10 have started. Seven did a trial and about 10 have started. Country like Ghana, Rwanda, Kenya have started shipment among themselves, including Cameroon, actually. Shipment among themselves. Um, and they were able to do that because they've been able to finalize the documentation required to get their uh, certificate of origin, which is a critical document at the destination market. So now, what is the proposal? So I'm talking about the pointers. These are pointers for export readiness. So if you hear that, oh, Nigerian products are being rejected, remember defective goods, say symptoms of lack of export readiness. Oh, um, people ship, they didn't get paid. Not once, not twice, a symptom of lack of export readiness. Whatever issue you see is traceable to this challenge. That's why in some countries, they ensure that they help the businesses to learn and guide them to become ready. So let me talk about the proposal. There are 15, remember, in the definition, it's a multifaceted concept. In this model, 15 area of readiness. 15 area of readiness because it's a multifaceted concept. The promoter needs to be ready. The product needs to be ready. The pricing needs to be ready. The staff predisposition to handle the product dem should demonstrate readiness. The purpose must also demonstrate readiness. The promotion, the capacity to produce to promote, rather, is an evidence of readiness. The capacity in terms of skill is an evidence of readiness. The production capacity is an evidence of readiness. The payment, sourcing funding, getting paid, the source of a sign of readiness. Positioning, that's the goodwill of the business. It's a sign of readiness. The country, that's the people understanding the consumer, the sign of readiness. Understand the regulatory requirement, like someone asked, what are the documents required to trade under AFCFTA? What are the documents required to trade under AFCFTA? Understanding those documentation is a sign of S4 readiness. Then potential. What is the potential? What are the potential? Potential in the export market. Potential of the item. Or whatever product you want to export, what are the potential that's mine? It's a sign of export readiness. Then the companion, probably the most important, because you'll be able to get a lot of information about the market on this that will help to affect adjust all other areas: the company factor, the capacity factor, the country factor, and the companion factor, the purchasers, and of course the partnership all evidence of readiness so the uh, promoter involved the owner product is the item of export the pricing has to do with the cost of the goods predisposition of the staff to do with staff point orientation the reason for export has to do with purpose payment has to do with getting funding and getting paid Production has to do with meeting demand. Proficiency has to do with skill and competence. Uh, production, promotion has to do with increasing awareness. Position has to do with goodwill. Potential has to do with market opportunity. Paperwork has to do with documentation. People has to do with consumer. The partnership has to do with service provider. And of course, purchase has to do with agent and distributor. Someone said, I'm going to have access. Oh, it's being recorded. You will get it. You will get the recording. All right, now, if you look at the owner, look at the owner. The owner needs to be experienced. You get experience, 
either through education or through practice. Through education or through practice. If you are new, practice, sorry, education, learning. I cannot overemphasize learning. International trade is knowledge intensive. So I cannot overemphasize learning. Learning. So the owner must know because he's going to coordinate the people in that business. So he must know and ready to commit. Number two, the product quality specification. How do I ensure my product meets quality? I need to know how to ensure that my product is of the right quality. I need to know. <laughs> I need to know. If I if you get news that oh we export the quality is bad, most likely the person exporting does not know because those that have been doing that same product export for many years don't have those issues. Most of the time, there are the people just coming in who want to make money but not ready to learn. For one reason or the other, people have different reasons for these things, and sometimes it's amazing. You know, sometimes some people will say, uh -uh, "How do I? I, I, I don't want to. I'm, I don't want to learn anything. I don't want to. I don't. I don't want any class. I just want to start." And some some people say, "I don't want theory. I want practical." So I always use the example of uh, as a science student in secondary school. Before I started titrating in the lab, I did. I learned about acid base and salt in the class in theory to be able to know if i'm mixing sulfuric acid with hydrochloric with um if i'm using hydrochloric acid with sodium hydroxide is going to produce salt sodium chloride and water <laughs> I'm, I'm able to know in theory then we went to the lab and did the titration and get the end point Neutralization point. The idea is this. Knowing it in theory make it easier to be able to practicalize it. So that those that are arguing around the fact that they want to learn, it just leaves a lot of jack edges here and there that can make the business to drop out, which is what we're seeing. Which is what we're seeing. To drop out. Pricing. Where are you sourcing your material from? Cost of freight, economy of scale. How are you keeping down the price? Staff, training of the staff. If the staff does not have any foreign orientation, capacity building for the staff can cover that. Why are you doing export? Why do you want to trade under AFCFTA? Why do you want to export to Europe and America? There are a lot of business you can do to make money. If the only reason is to make money, Maybe there are other things you might want to consider. Sincerely, because, because of the other complexity related to this, you must have some other important reason. Let me give you an example. If I am an importer, currently have my business threatened by the lack of foreign exchange in Nigeria. If I'm an importer, I know I don't need a prophet to tell me I need to generate forex. So no matter the stress, what I need to learn, the challenges, the motivation to keep my import business going and get forex at competitive rate keeps me going to still continue to do it and make it work because I'm looking to generate forex, my business survivor is threatened. There is an incentive that can become make me more profitable. Or I have a vision to have a global brand. There must be something driving the promoter of the business, the brain or the management of the business, so that even when there are issues or challenges, they still go ahead. Why? Because there are other important considerations that makes 
doing export a necessity for the business that makes doing export a necessity for the business that makes doing export a necessity for the business if i don't see that sincerely i wouldn't likely want to contend with the issues and challenges that will likely confront me as i try to go about doing export business so there must be a very strong motivation the next one under the capacity factor is payment payment getting funding and getting paid getting funding to pay local supplier and getting paid after shipment you need to have a good understanding on how to secure your payment else the business will be out of business. You need to have a good understanding how to secure your payment and how to secure funding for your export project. Not to be looking for funding when you have a contract and when they are expecting you to ship. Production capacity. Now, you know, there is people think a lot about competition. I think it's high time we begin to think competition 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 involves combination of both competition and collaboration competition and collaboration because when you start you might not be able to meet the demand you might need to depend on your competitor that means you work with your competitor to produce for you in your brand that is why competitors are not your enemy your partner in progress, as far as national trade is concerned, none of you can meet the demand. The demand is huge. The population of Africa is 1.3 billion people. The demand is huge. The demand is huge. So you might need this kind of collaboration to boost production capacity. Proficiency, skill, being a, be attending this program, it's one of the process, learning as many as you learn. And you see all these facts that I talk about? They are all the things you need to know and learn about. <laughs> they are all the things you need to know and learn about. Skill, handling documentation, research and development to meet the demand, handling trade finance instrument, managing risk, promotion, increasing awareness. This was why I said the other time that you need um, um, funding, you need budget. You need funding, you need budget to be able to fund promotion. Let me now answer the question of the person that said he's not able to get buyer. You need to understand that you need to promote your product. There is a pack I will show you when I'm rounding up shortly. And that pack basically elaborates all the A options. Elaborate and it describes the options. About 10 different options that you need to explore when you're looking for buyer. But you need to do a mix of it. Don't just focus on one. So some people will go on Alibaba or Thread Key or Global Buy Online, register pay. And that's all they do. Do a mix of different activities, marketing effort to promote. And of course, this comes at a cost to your organization. Positioning, goodwill and heritage. Positioning, goodwill and heritage. If you want to export, the item you want to export, is there a demand for it already? If it's commodity, that's easy. There is a demand. But if it's finished goods, the market you are looking at, is there a demand? What? And then, if you have a finished good, and people, without marketing it, people are asking for it. That's a sign of positioning for export. People abroad are asking. 
So you sold it in a store locally. Someone bought it and went to Ghana or went to Togo or went to US or went to UK. And it's asking that, can you supply us? We'd like to distribute this product abroad. That's goodwill. That's positioning. Then potential. Of course, if you are ready, like the lady or the person that talk about different products, you mentioned a number of products. Have you tried to check the potential market for this product? You mentioned um, raw shea butter, black soap, neem oil, moringa leaf and powder, cola nut, bitter cola, palm cane oil. Have you tried to check if they have export potential within or outside Africa and the, and the demand and the size of the market? Please check. Do a, a search of it. That might just be an eye opener to narrow on a few of that product. To narrow on a few rather than working on different products so that you will know, am I even ready? Do I, is there, because if my product is not potential, I'm not ready. Documentation, paperwork. I need to have, what are the, a good understanding of the regulatory issues? Regulatory issues, documentation issue. Someone said, talking of demand, how do we gauge the demand level in Africa and American market? There are tools online, some paid, some free. Trademap.org is owned by International Trade Center and it's free. You can easily pick a product and check the total demand in the world and the top 10 countries and what they bought in the last two, three years. And if there are changes in their volume, you can see all that available online. So you can know the demand in the world and in every country of your choice. Very, very possible. Such data are available. People, consumer, if I'm going to enter a market successfully, successfully, I need to be able to understand the people. I need to know the people, understand the people. And by people, I mean consumers, 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 consumers. What do they buy? When do they buy? Why do they buy? Where do they buy? Which option do they buy the most? And then the companion factor. Partnership, service provider. Do not ship to a market where you don't have a representative. Do not. That's why if you are in America, I want to ship from Nigeria to America, fantastic. Because you are there and you can work with people at home to ship to you. If you are shipping to Ghana, you should have a rep in Ghana. Look, if you don't do that, you will enter successfully. You might not be able to compete and become established. Because there will be issues in the market. If you don't have a rep, are you going to be flying that every time? That does not make sense. That is inefficient. There must be a rep at destination. With the partnership at destination, you will get purchasers. You will know how to handle the small challenge. You will be able to assess wholesalers. You will know the right entry strategy. You will be able to know the distribution options available for you in the export market. Available for you in the export market. Seidu said it's in Ghana, so Seidu can represent you in Ghana. <laughs> why are you why are you represent him in Nigeria? <laughs> All right. So representation is so important. Now, after before you need to evaluate yourself, evaluate your business. I, I will drop a link on the WhatsApp group before the end of the week where you can do a self-evaluation and get a report free of charge. Do a self-evaluation and do and get a report free of charge. When you fill in the questionnaire and submit, you get a report that will show if you are ready, that will show if you are almost ready, midway to ready, just starting, 
preparing to start. Depending on the score that you have, and that will determine whether you should go ahead or not. As I close, participation. How do we participate in the AFCFTA? Or if you want to export the export, I mean the US market, you can participate in export as a passive or active exporter. Passive or active exporter. As a passive exporter, you can export, you can be an investor in export business or export support professional, like trade lawyers, brokers, you want to help people source for buyer and get commission, or you want to help people recover payment after shipment or draft their contract, professionals, logistics, production, whatever it is they are doing, supporting. Then the export investor. But the active investor, exporter, exporter of services or exporter of product, which could be commodities or manufactured goods. Let me talk about those of us in diaspora for a, for a while. If you are in diaspora and you want to do business back at home, you can act as representative for people who want to ship from your country. You can act as representative. You can act, you can set up a subsidiary of your company at home and abroad. Or you can set up a branch. So for example, if you have, if you are in Ghana and you want to enter a market in the US, you are from Ghana, you want to enter the market in the US, or you are or you are you are from Ghana and you want to enter, let's say, the market in Morocco, and you live in Morocco. You can represent your company in that market. You can set up a subsidiary of your company because you're already, there is a company that wants to enter Morocco and you partner together to enter, to do the business together. Or you have a business in Ghana, you set up a branch in Morocco. You have a business in Nigeria, you set up a branch in Ghana. You have a business in, in Nigeria, you have set up a branch in the US. Now, and I'm emphasizing this because having a rep, that partner, a destination, either in form of a rep, in form of a subsidiary, in form of a branch, is a saving grace. It's the one that will help solve a lot of, what are the issues they will help you solve? Number one, they can act a consignee. They can help you to use any payment methods. Of course, they have service charge to keep them afloat. They will help in document handling. They will help in mitigating payment risk. They help in marketing a destination. Can you see why you will not be looking for buyer? That you are looking for buyer is a sign that there's a issue issue with understanding of being ready for export. Because you have business a destination, you can increase your growth potential. You have control over the market at destination. It's easy to recover debt. And more importantly, you can also do inspection, second leg of inspection, when it becomes necessary upon arrival of the goods at destination. As a roundup, if you are looking for a product that can help you to understand how to find buyer, it's called Eureka. I found it. <laughs> It's a pack that has two manuals that help you in getting ready for export and give you 10 different options how to find buyer. And it has about 27 video, video attached to it that demonstrates how to find buyer abroad. We also help with our coaching program to help you solve problem in any area of export that you have. We also have old novice. We call it from export novice to export legend. You know next to nothing export, we can assist you. We work with you from beginning to the end. You don't just do the training. We work with you to implement what you have learned. If you also are abroad and you need support services to do your shipment out of Nigeria, we have export support services that can help you help us uh, get you to ship your goods, do your documentation, and ship the goods abroad. And then, as I conclude, I would like to stress the need for reasonable and regular investment in trade education by exporting company in order to be export ready, so as to prevent each free export documentation 
hassle-free export clearance process and hiccup-free export payment process. Thank you very much. <laughs>